Greetings and welcome. This is Mr. Wadi. I'm going over our homework for the section 4.5, Analyzing Lines of Fit. And this is page 206. And I've got some data as well uh, on tables in Google Sheets that we're going to end up using to, to make the process a little quicker. Uh, so it says, use residuals to determine whether the model is a good fit for the data in the table. Explain. So here we go, we have an equation that represents this data, which would be data of like a scatter plot, for instance. And I'm going to use this data and, and calculate the uh, expected or predicted y value by plugging in these x values into this function. And then compare that to the actual y values and see how far off our predictions are. So in order to do that, I've got this uh, data where I've already got it laid out. And so I'm going to write here, write uh, the predicted Y value using the model. And in order to do that, I'm going to use some formulas in my spreadsheet. So I hit equals. And what was our equation? It was 4X minus 5. So I'm going to, under after equals, I'm going to do 4 times, which is the star, and my value for x is negative 4. All right, so 4 times x, and then we had, what, minus 5. So I do minus 5, hit enter. And I get negative 21 would have been the predicted y value. The actual y value was negative 18. Now if I make this black plus sign after collect, uh, selecting the cell and drag it down, it duplicates that formula, each one pulling from its own respective x, right? So you can see that the formula is working. And so I get all of these predicted y values. Now what I want to calculate is the residual, which I do that by subtracting, uh, I do the real y value, the actual, subtract the predicted. So I'm going to do equals this cell minus this cell. I hit enter uh, like so. So this was off by three. Um, the actual was three above our line. And if I drag this down, uh, actually, ooh, that's weird. This isn't a very good line. All of these are above the line. Huh, that's weird. Uh, but what I'm going to do is compare uh, for these X values. I select both of these columns. So I clicked and highlighted, let go. And then I held down control and clicked and highlighted this. So I have both of these columns and I'm going to insert a chart like so. Uh, I'll make a scatter plot and this is going to plot the points of the residuals. And so as I look at this, let's see, let me, uh, do, 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 do. all right, grab a snapshot of this. There we go, switch out of that, go back here. And so what I end up getting is this chart, uh, and I don't think it looks real good, folks. This isn't good at all, because uh, I'm hoping that my residuals would be above and below the x-axis equally. So this is uh, not a good estimate. All right, for my model function, uh, the residuals are clustered above the uh, x-axis. Let's see, above the x-axis. Now, uh, oh. Maureen Taylor, please call extension. Now, in, in analyzing this, if I wanted to make it better, uh, I think if I, if I had the x-axis about here, that would be a little bit better, right? So it's possible if I subtracted 3 from my function, right, maybe if this was a minus 8, uh, maybe this would be a little bit better of a model. And so by analyzing this, I actually could determine how, how good it is and maybe ways that I might be able to tweak it, whether or not it's even linear. All right, this it says, using a graphing calculator, we're going to use a spreadsheet. 
to find the, equi find the equation of the line and the best fit data, identify, interpret the correlation coefficient. All right, so correlation coefficient. Now, what the correlation coefficient is, is a means, uh, just like how I can analyze the residuals, it is a means to, uh, to look at, to get a number and get an idea of how good the function or model is at representing my data. So it's kind of like looking at all of the residuals together. Here's, here's uh, the way we describe it. So it's, it's, a, it's a number referred to as R, and it says uh, when we use technology, whatever, uh, and we use the linear regression system to, to find the best fit line, to find a precise line of fit, uh, the, the line best, uh, this line best models the set of data. The calculator can also give us a value referred to as R. Uh, we're going to get an R squared, all right, called the correlation coefficient. Uh, this value tells whether or not the, the correlation is positive or negative and how closely the equation models the data. The values of R range from negative 1 to 1. When R is close to the ends, all right, when R is close to a, a one or negative one, that means there's a strong correlation between the variables in either the negative or the positive direction. Uh, if R is close to zero, that's when our data is like super scattered and the correlation is, is probably not even there. Uh, so it, it kind of almost like consider this, uh, you could pretend this isn't actually what it is, but you could pretend it's what percent accurate was it? Is it close to 100% or 0% accurate, so to speak? All right, and then the negatives just tell us whether or not the slope of our line of best fit was positive or negative. So, so using this data, let's see, let's find the best fit line. So let's see, so this is uh, example problem 11. All right, here's my data. So to do that, I'd select the data, or I would have typed it in, select the data, insert a chart, and I'm gonna go through this a little bit quick since my students have already seen it. Here's my data, and I could, I could probably draw a line of, of uh, best fit and then find the equation myself, but it turns out so can the computer. If I scroll all the way down on the customization tab, there's trend line. And I'm going to hit linear. And we did this in class. Uh, and I can label using the equation. So here's the equation. So my slope is 2.071x minus 5. So the slope is the 2.701. The y-intercept is the negative 7.5 for my best fit line. And when I highlight it, you can even see what the equation is. Uh, let's actually make this line uh, red. We'll make it solid. We'll make it a little bit thicker. And, and check this out, label, I have this option of showing R squared. Now this data is pretty well represented by this line. The line is positive. I would expect an R value is gonna be positive, first of all, because of the slope of that line is positive. And I would expect that it's going to be pretty strong because these points are pretty tight to that line. So I'm, I'm guessing maybe around 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And wow, 0 0.961. So you could pretend, so to speak, that this is like 96% accurate is, is kind of the way you could pretend, uh, even though this line actually only hits one of the points. So maybe maybe that's not the best analysis or analogy. Uh, but I, I think like that's that's kind of a friendly way you could interpret it. So let's see, let me, uh, let me copy this, do, 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 copy. And so as far as my data goes, uh, the R value for question 11, oh, I'm running out of space. Let's see, here we go, I can get it right here. All right, so the R value, I got 0 0.961, uh, 0 0.961, if I, if I want the R value that the book is talking about, it's gonna be the square root of that number, 0.961 square root, I get 0.98, that's even better. So that means R equals the square root of 0 0.961. Uh, so the R that the book is referring to, that calculators give you this one as well, is 0 0.9803. So according to the book standard, we are we are way up here. This is a strong positive correlation for question 11. And that's what the uh, 
correlation coefficient is. Uh, it's this number that kind of represents how well my data is modeled by the line. All right, last question, question 19. Pick it up, pick it up here. All right, the table shows the mileage uh, X in thousands of miles and selling prices Y in thousands of dollars of several used automobiles of the same year and model. So thousands of miles. So that's only 22,000 miles. Uh, I was thinking even 220,000 uh, miles is something you might buy, but it wouldn't be $16,000 by any means. Uh, actually, I wonder if that, you know, no, I think that might be an exponential relationship. Let's see. But I'm going to take this data. I'm going to find the equation of best fit. So let's let's do that. Let's do that. So go to my data here. Uh, this was question 19. Uh, there we go. I've got my data. All right. I'm going to select it and insert a chart and use in technology. Here we go. Scrolling down. Scatter plot. Customize. Ooh, there is. Oh, that looks like there's a correlation there. Uh, I think that's a negative correlation by the looks of things. Add a trend line, looks like linear, and we will uh, label it with the equation. So there's my slope. Uh, we'll make my trend line red and solid, a little bit thicker. And let's show this R squared just because we can. Ooh, 0.93. All right, so it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty strong of a correlation. Right, so let's insert this chart here, and uh, I will uh, use some invert. Invert this, there we go. Voila. And here we go. So here is our, where's my scroller? There it is. All right, so here is our graph. Here is our equation, all right, like so. Let's see, let's make sure we got this right. Uh, so this point is 30 comma 14. So 30 comma 14 right there, all right? So that corresponds to that. So the X is the mileage and the Y is the price. All right, and it appears as though uh, as mileage increases the price drops right so the more miles on the car the lower the price that makes sense that makes sense right because there's less life of the car left for you to buy so it says identify and interpret the correlation coefficient so r is going to equal the square root of 0 0.938 let's see calculadora here i don't expect you to do that in your head so second square root 0.938 is r equals uh, 0 0.969 so 0 0.969 is the r value and that means there is a strong wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute oh i gotta be careful this was r squared ah so when i square root i think i'm i'm interested in the negative because the slope was negative so r would have been that one so there's a strong negative correlation all right strong negative correlation next they asked me interpret the slope so what was the slope the slope was the uh, y equals negative 0.184 x so the slope is this negative 0 0.814 uh, over 1 so what does that mean what does that mean rise over run well our x was in miles measured in thousands and our y was recorded in price let's see you a price in thousands and what that means is that the price drops uh 0.184 thousand dollars for every 1,000 miles. Uh, if I uh, tried to scale up the thousands, if I multiplied each of those by a thousand, that's the same as um, dropping by $184 per 1,000 miles. Notice if I just shift the decimal one, two, or sorry, one, two, three, 
and uh, here was a decimal one, two, three, that'd be adding three zeros. Um, that would be uh, dropping $184 per thousand miles that you drive, is what that means. And then it says, approximate the mileage of an automobile that costs this much. Now that's the output of my function. So what I'm going to do is say 15500. Zero, zero. When is that equal to, well, what was my equation? Negative 0.184x, negative 0 0.8, no, I already forgot, 1.84, there it goes, I've got it right up there too, 1.84x, and let's see, this is going to be calculators, uh, plus 19.717, plus 19.717. So, solve for x, so I would subtract uh, 19.717 from both sides. That's very small if I line up those decimals, right? So 15,500 uh, minus 19.717. I'm going to get uh, 15,480.283. Those decimals I probably could have ignored at this point uh, is equal to the negative 0.184x. So divide both sides by negative 0 0.184 and wait a minute 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 price that's the cost that was the y value right why am i getting a negative here oh <laughs> they got me friends you know how they got me do you see how they got me they got me. Uh, they got me because I entered this in as that number, but we were measuring it in thousands. That means Y is equal to 15.5. I plugged it in as thousands. So let me fix this. Oh dear, how how embarrassing. Let's see, let me copy some. Let's see. And let's see, can I scale that? I mean, want, 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 want. Look at that's that's one way to delete your work. I guess that'll that'll work. Uh, so let's see. All right, let's try again. <laughs> Fifteen point five equals negative zero one eight four x plus. Let's see. There we go. Now, why was I even suspicious of that? I was suspicious because I was going to get a negative number, and I don't think cars can have negative miles on them. Uh, ask Ferris Bueller. Um, Let's see, 19.717, 19.717, which is uh, actually that skill is really valuable, uh, being able to check the feasibility, the reasonableness of your answer, um, right? It, uh, it should make sense in the context of the real world problem. And, uh, and that one was not going to. So let's see, so 15.5 minus 19.717, I get uh, negative 4.217 equals, all right, the algebra is gonna be the same. I just had the wrong numbers I was working with. So if that was a quiz or a test, I would have lost a point, right, for that error, but the rest of my work was, was gonna be just correct. So divide both sides by this. All right, here we go. Now we're getting interesting. And I'm gonna get X equals, uh, divide this by negative 0.184, and I get this, 22.92. Now, what does that mean? That means 22,920 miles are on the car. All right? Okay, let's do the last one real quick. All right, pick up the pace. I made a mistake. So this time the miles are 6,000, in terms of this problem, x equals 6. So this time I don't know the y or the cost, but I do know the x. So I'm going to plug that in for x. So y equals negative 0 0.184 times 6, not 6,000, plus 19.717. And man, I'm having a hard time finding my scroll bar. There it is. So y equals, multiply 6 by that, 6 times negative 0.184. I'll show my calculations here so you can follow along. 
Add them up. And I get 19.717, uh, giving me a total of 18.613. So what does that mean? That means the price, the expected price, the predicted price is $18,613 is the predicted price. All right. Well, thanks for watching, friends. Have a great day.